All right, good evening. Uh, appreciate your patience. We want to make sure that we gave everybody an opportunity to go ahead and log in if they're not uh, attending in person. Uh, my name is Tad Casebeer. I'm the county engineer, and uh, we're going to talk about the road program and uh, county priority road list uh, for this upcoming uh, fiscal year. Uh, we've got several different staff members here tonight uh, around the room, so if you have a question, if you would, please go ahead and hold it till the end of the presentation, and uh, somebody can get you an answer to your question overall. Uh, we've got a bunch of people online, and uh, if we allow people to go ahead and ask questions during the presentation, potentially it leaves them in a position where their questions get overlooked. So, uh, as I said, please just uh, wait until after we get through, if you would. All right, so what are we going to talk about tonight? Part of what we're going to talk about tonight is two types of projects. Uh, our road program consists of capacity projects and safety projects. Uh, we do not talk about resurfacing projects as a portion of this. Uh, our road and bridge group uh, is the group that handles that aspect of uh, our road program. Uh, they do uh, their prioritization based on uh, the value that we find on roads. They go out and they drive each road uh, every three years. They assign a pavement condition index to it. And then based on those numbers, they go ahead and uh, set up the resurfacing program for each year uh, in the next three year cycle. So those have already been done and that's all basically qualitative uh, and they handle that portion of it. So capacity projects and safety projects are what we're working on as a part of this. Uh, capacity projects are pretty simple. Uh, we just add lanes to a particular road or we go ahead and uh, make other improvements, particularly at intersections, uh, adding turn lanes, those types of things that allow more people to utilize that facility. Safety projects are situations where we are not adding capacity. Uh, we won't be adding lanes. We may add turn lanes if it improves safety uh, at an intersection or along a road segment, uh, but it's generally adding uh, paved shoulders, uh, maybe adding a signal at a four-way stop, or even potentially putting in a roundabout, things that uh, will protect our citizens. And it's generally more about bringing a road up to current safety standards. We have a lot of our road systems that were built before current safety standards, and uh, in particular, for uh, some of the worst roads, we want to go ahead and try to bring those closer to uh, the current safety standards. All right. Uh, the first part of what we're going to talk about, there we go, is how do we pay for our road projects? Uh, so that you can understand what we've got to work with, uh, we discussed the revenue. First part of uh, our revenue stream for building roads comes from the local option gas tax. Our county uh, levies the max allowed by the state, 12 cents per gallon. Uh, that number stays the same whether gas prices go up or gas prices go down. Uh, the state and federal gas taxes are indexed, meaning that if the gas prices or inflation goes up, then they go up as well. If they go down, they drop as well. So, but our number is locked in at 12 cents. A certain percentage of that we earmark specifically for capacity projects, adding lanes, uh, turn lanes, those types of things, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, you can see in the uh, fiscal year of 2223, uh, we gathered two or six million dollars in gas tax, uh, and uh, we have a million dollar uh, each year loan payment that we have to make for the southern section of Williamson. This year is the last year we have to make that payment overall, but uh, since we had to make it, obviously that cuts into that amount of gas tax, and we basically have 5.2 million dollars with which to work with. Nice thing about local option gas tax uh, is that it can be used anywhere in the county. Uh, that's not the same thing for impact fees. Impact fees are collected any time a developer builds something uh, or anybody builds anything, whether it's a home, a business, those types of things. They're creating an impact on the adjacent road neighbor or network, and therefore they have to pay for that impact. Uh, impact fees are collected in zones. Money collected in a particular zone has to be spent in that zone. Uh, the county's been divided into four impact fee zones. Uh, zone one is the northeast quadrant of the county, basically Daytona Beach North. Zone two is the southeast portion of the county, basically uh, that line just south of Daytona Beach, vast majority of Port Orange, south, including New Smyrna Beach, Oak Hill, and that area. Uh, zone three is the southwest portion of the county, Deltona, Orange City, DeBerry. And then zone four is the land basically in the northwest. Uh, you can see the amount of money that was collected in uh, each of those different zones in that same fiscal year. Uh, zone one 
uh, obviously has a lot of growth. Zone three had a lot of growth during that time period, and that's reflected in the amount of money that was collected uh, in those particular zones. Uh, 20 years ago, the county uh, obtained a bond to build a group of road projects. Those road projects have been built. This is the last year that we have to pay back on that bond. We use impact fee monies to pay that bond back. And as you can see for each of the different zones, there's a different bond payment requirement for that particular zone. It's based on uh, the roads that were built in that particular zone, dictating what the cost was for that particular zone. So the uh, net amount is the amount we actually have to spend in that fiscal year uh, overall. And you can see over in the far right, we give the balance of impact fees that are collected. Uh, doesn't mean that that money isn't allocated or budgeted for a project, but that's the amount of money we had actually on hand. We also, from developers, collect proportionate fair share payments. If uh, they're putting a development in an area where the roads are uh, at or near capacity and they cause them to go over capacity, they have to pay for that impact uh, as well. Uh, again, like with impact fees, it's tied to a particular zone. We use the same exact zone lines uh, for proportionate fair share that we do for impact fees. So, and you can see again where the uh, development is occurring. Zone one has uh, been grown like the Dickens and the proportionate fair share amount collected in that zone reflect that. It also tells you too that the road network in that area is overstressed because we only charge this if they cause the roads to go over capacity. So. So what do we have to spend? We just talked about what we've collected. You can see the local option gas tax. Uh, we've got uh, 900,000 that's not uh, committed at this point in time uh, from that original six million. Uh, in each of the different zones, we give the balance for the impact fees that we saw on that first slide. Uh, we also give now a proportionate fair share amount that was collected for that fiscal year. And you can see, for example, in zone one that uh, we have a budget of, or a total amount of $23 million to spend in that particular zone. The number on the far right is the budgeted amount. This is taking a look at the projects that we've got in that particular zone uh, that we've funded using these sources. And uh, you can see that we've got planned 27, almost $28 million worth of projects. This is not for this fiscal year. This is actually for fiscal year 25, 26. So the difference the $4 million difference will be basically made up, or the expectation is that it'll be made up with impact fees and proportionate fair share payments between now and that time frame. Uh, you can see that uh, that's pretty much the case throughout with the exception of zone four. Uh, you see that we've got quite a bit of money available in zone four, uh, and we haven't not budgeted that much overall. A big part of that is that uh, we have the Orange Camp Road project, which we previously studied but it has not been approved to move forward into design or construction, and it will certainly eat up the difference in that location. And once we get to that point and get the council to uh, make a recommendation on how the project moves forward, then it'll be uh, added to the budget amount at that point and gobble up that difference. One of the other things of note, when it costs, what it costs us to build a road. Basically, at this point in time, with inflation the way it is, to put two lanes out there, whether it's a new two-lane road or adding two lanes to an existing road, it's basically five to $10 million. It's a wide range, but uh, you've got quite a few different circumstances that may affect what that cost may be. If you're building, in the road, building a road or adding lanes on a road uh, out in a rural area where there are, it's basically a vacant property or a farmland, you don't generally have much of a design issue. You can usually construct that pretty cheaply. But if you get into town and you've got to buy right of way from uh, a business or uh, homes, those types of things, all of that will have a huge effect on what the cost of your road is and push you closer, if not to that $10 million number. So, so that's what we've got to spend and that's what we've got budgeted. So what are the things that we're working on right now? The projects that we're working on right now, we call our road program. And uh, we've divided the county up, like I said, into the four different zones. We're gonna go through each of the zones and discuss each of the projects that we're currently working on so you've got an idea of what, uh, what we're doing. Uh, what you see on this map is the uh, condition of the road network back in fiscal year 21. This was the last time we presented the road program to the council for, uh, for their approval. Uh, what you see on this map is an indication of the uh, capacity problems that we have in the county. Any of the orange or red indicate that the road is near a critical stage where we're 
uh, at a point where the road is ready to fail. Uh, the red generally means it's at failure or just past failure. Orange means that it's getting close to that aspect of it. Uh, each individual road segment has a capacity assigned to it by our traffic engineering group. They take a look at the conditions of the road. Simple things like the lanes uh, are our primary indicator, but on top of that, if you have a large number of signals, if you've got uh, a large number of driveways, uh, different things can affect the capacity of that road overall. And uh, they establish that capacity as a level of service. And then uh, each year they go out there and they take traffic counts on each road segment uh, on our thoroughfare road network. And the roads that are over capacity where the counts indicate that we're past the level of service are marked as red. If we're getting close, 80% or above, then we're in the orange. So you can see this is what the situation was back in fiscal year 21. The black outlines indicate projects that we had uh, uh, ongoing at the time. So you can see that uh, one of the main things that we target with our capacity projects is tackling those orange and red sections uh, overall. We also have some sections that you'll see on there, particularly say in uh, zone two down in the southeast where there are no colors on the road, but we still have a black outline. Those are the safety projects if there's not a red or your orange section in there uh, where we're going ahead and improving the safety on that particular road segment. This is the priority list that was previously approved by the council. These are the projects that we uh, were told to go ahead and move forward with in terms of funding and move into design and ultimately construction. Uh, on this list, since that meeting or since that approval, we've uh, funded nine out of the 10 on this list overall. Uh, Taylor Road number 10 has not been funded. Uh, at this point, we don't have the money available to pay for construction, and uh, so we have not programmed it for design, and we'll cover that in a little bit as to why. But uh, uh, just because we have, as I said, funded the project doesn't mean all the phases of it are funded. We have several of them on this list where we funded the design portion of the uh, project, but we have not funded the construction as yet, simply because we don't have the budget to do so. Uh, also, a note just to, so you can understand what's on the graphic, the colors indicate the zone just to make it a little bit easier to read. Uh, that's the only difference. One final thing I'd point out on this is that uh, while we did go ahead and uh, number them one through 10, and that was tentatively the priority, it doesn't always work out that way. In uh, particular, in this case, uh, a vast majority of these projects got funded when we had money become available. So for example, uh, number eight, the Williamson widening from Bevel down to Madeline was actually the first project we had full funding for in this project. Part of that was because it was near a project, uh, uh, an Amazon distribution center, and uh, in coordination with the city of Daytona and ourselves, we earmarked their uh, proportionate fair share money specifically to this project to help alleviate the traffic problems in that area uh, overall. And uh, then we were able to go ahead and supplement that money uh, rather easy and uh, move that project forward before some of these others. So, uh, project that we're working on now, starting in the Northeast in Zone 1. Up in Ormond Beach, we have the Hand Avenue project. We're widening uh, a portion of this section from Clyde Morris to Nova Road. Uh, if you're familiar with that area, the western portion of that segment is a two-lane road. The eastern portion is actually a five-lane road. Uh, we're actually going to make it four lanes throughout. We're gonna get rid of the uh, continuous turn lane in the five lane section and uh, we will keep turn lanes in there. They will just not be an open free flow condition uh, overall. Uh, we have both the design and construction for this section funded. And uh, as you see the number on the right hand side over there, the number five, that means uh, just for reference, that was number five on the council's priority list last time around. Uh, the uh, next project is Daytona Beach uh, and Daytona Beach is Williamson Boulevard winding from Strickland to Hand. Uh, we've completed the design and the right-of-way, and actually, we, uh, it says we're at construction bidding. We actually have the bids back. Uh, this was put together before uh, we got the bids back last week, so we are moving into construction uh, as soon as the council approves the construction budget or construction contract for that project. Uh, we're also working on LPGA and Clyde Morris intersection improvements. We're adding a uh, second left turn lane on the uh, northbound portion of Clyde Morris. Uh, we're making some other turn lane improvements in that area. Overall, we're at a point where we're in construction and uh, working on that. Uh, also working on the Dunn Avenue extension from Tomoka Farms Road to LPGA Boulevard. Uh, this one is funded for design. It is not yet funded for construction. 
The uh, cost of the bridge over the Tomoka River uh, has pushed this project back because of the cost that uh, associated with that. Um, we're working towards that and we may actually split the project in two parts so that we're not stuck waiting for the whole thing uh, based on the funding that uh, we have available. Uh, we're also working on Williamson Boulevard uh, down at the south end between Bevel and Madeline. That's a two lane section that we're going ahead and widening to four lanes. The entire project, both design and construction are funded. In zone two, uh, we've got uh, down in the Port Orange area, uh, we've got uh, the Taylor Road widening from Forest Preserve to Summer Trees. As I noted, this was number 10. This has not been funded at this point in time. Uh, the reason for that is that we actually had a design that was done for this project back in 2011. Uh, we did not have construction funds at that point in time, uh, which is not unusual. We do that on occasion. Uh, if, if we have the plans for a project and a federal grant or a state grant becomes available for shovel-ready projects, this puts us in a position to get money from, uh, from that particular grant uh, overall. And uh, we haven't had that opportunity. That hasn't come up yet. But we uh, have that project. We basically call it on the shelf, on the shelf ready to go. Uh, it will need to go through an update. It doesn't make any sense to do the update because if we don't have the construction yet funded, the conditions will change potentially and we'll have to redo it yet again. So uh, we have that ready to go. Uh, for an update if uh, construction become construction funds become available. Uh, we've also got the Taylor Branch Road improvements from Dunlop to Clyde Morris. Uh, this is the only other section on here, as you see from the map, that is either red or orange. Just covered Taylor was the other one. Um, most of this section is actually safety projects. This uh, Taylor Branch Road improvements, we've designed it, or we've got the budget for it to be funded next year, and then uh, Sometime after that, when we have the budget, we'll go ahead and fund construction. New, new Smyrna Beach area. We've got the Pioneer Trails and Tomoka Farms Road intersection improvement. This is basically turning that four-way stop next to the cabbage patch into a uh, roundabout. Uh, will improve safety. We had several fatalities in that area and quite a few bad accidents. Uh, so we're getting rid of that four-way stop condition and putting in a roundabout. Uh, it is listed as a capacity project, but it is really more of a safety project overall. Uh, it will do both in this case, uh, but uh, that's how it's listed. The uh, orange, and this is the first of these that we've seen, the orange text indicates that it's a safety project. Uh, so Turnbull Bay Road, we're adding paved shoulders from Pioneer Trail over to Creek Shore. Uh, this project is under construction now. Uh, we're, we're working towards, uh, we're, on this project we had uh, actually some federal funds uh, for, uh, for this particular project. So also in that area, we're working on uh, Sugar Mill and Pioneer Trail, another project that's under construction right now. In this case, we're adding a signal and turn lanes to uh, what was a four-way stop. Uh, Pioneer Trail and Williams, uh, we're making some improvements at that intersection. Uh, we previously studied it. That was the number one uh, priority on the previous council's list. And uh, that was predominantly because it was so cheap but also because it is something safety related and we do want to improve that situation as soon as possible. We'll be making some improvements that will increase sight distance and uh, reduce accidents in that location. Uh, the next project, Old Mission, is the first of what we uh, have been, uh, first safety project that we would consider as capital safety project. In the past, we had always funded things like intersection improvements and that type of thing because they were cheaper and we could afford to do them but we've now started setting aside money for larger safety projects. And if you're familiar with Old Mission through New Smyrna Beach, Edgewater in that area, you know that uh, there's a rather large canal slash ditch immediately adjacent to the road, uh, in some cases so close that there's not even room to put guardrail uh, overall. So under this project, uh, which we're in design on right now, we're gonna go ahead and shift the road uh, at the southern end so that it's farther away from the ditch. And on the northern end, we'll now be shifting the ditch so it's farther away from the road. Uh, either way, improving the conditions that are out there um, overall. Uh, Pioneer Trail Safety Project is from Tomoka Farms Road to Williamson. It's basically a similar situation. The ditches uh, are on both sides. There are two side ditches. Uh, they're not as deep, but you have that same situation, and the roadway itself is narrow on top of it. So if there were an incident where you had to uh, swerve to avoid something, you're going to end up in the ditch. Uh, and this is the second project that we had earmarked for capital safety project uh, overall. We'll start design on that uh, next year. 
Moving into zone three in Orange City, we've got the uh, first of the Veterans Memorial Projects. We had a small section south of Rhode Island that was still two lanes. Uh, under this project that's uh, under construction right now, we'll be four landing all the way up through Rhode Island to include the intersection at Rhode Island. Uh, that's predominantly uh, development funded. Uh, Veterans Memorial Parkway extension from Graves Avenue to 472. If you live on this side of the county, you're familiar with the jog that uh, occurs right now. Veterans Memorial basically tees into Graves, then you have to head east. If you want to keep going north on uh, Graves to Kentucky, and then you go north on Kentucky, which then becomes Martin Luther King, which then becomes Kepler. What this will do is basically, basically make a straight connection from Veterans, which will be extended all the way up to 472, where it'll go back to Martin Luther King. So. Uh, we're uh, very excited to get this one going. We've, uh, uh, it says design is pending. We've actually started design. Again, we've moved forward since this was originally set and uh, construction is funded for this and uh, we're moving on this as quickly as we can. We also have a section of veterans. Uh, as I said, on the first project, we're extending the four landing up through Rhode Island. This third project would actually take the four landing from Rhode Island all the way up to Graves. Uh, this one is funded for design, but we have not yet funded it for construction uh, overall. Also in this area, you've got the uh, Rhode Island extension uh, that would carry Rhode Island from Veterans Memorial at the intersection we just talked about over to uh, Normandy, including an overpass over I-4. Uh, this is something that's been on again, off again, as I mentioned with the uh, Taylor project that was done back in 2011. This is the same thing. This was a project that was designed back in uh, that time frame. It actually was funded for construction, but then when the school board moved the high school site from DeLand down to uh, Orange City, we ended up shifting the money from this project to build Rhode Island to the west to accommodate the high school traffic. So it's been sitting in limbo uh, since then. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, start working towards getting it funded. We've gotta go through the design update. Construction not yet funded on this, but we do expect it. Uh, we've been working quite a bit with the city of Deltona. Uh, they've got a desire for this ultimately to be an interchange. At one point, the Department of Transportation is a part of their uh, larger beyond the ultimate project with the express lanes was ultimately going to bring uh, the express lanes all the way up to this intersection and stop. And this was going to be an interchange specific for the express lanes. That has not stopped, but they have put it, pushed it quite a bit back based on uh, their lack of funding for that project. So. Uh, anything we design out here will be in coordination with both the city and uh, the Department of Transportation to make sure that uh, we don't design something that they have to tear out and throw away. Uh, bridges are not cheap and we certainly don't want to waste one. Moving into zone four, we are currently working on the Amelia Avenue uh, lane reduction uh, we're from Boris to Ohio. This is taking out a uh, what was a four lane section and creating a three lane section to accommodate the turns uh, that were causing problems from a safety standpoint uh, overall. That's currently under construction right now. We've got uh, also the Beersford Avenue extension from Blue Lake to uh, Martin Luther King Klep Kepler. That uh, is just now starting construction. Uh, the contractor approval was, uh, uh, the contractor was approved at the last council meeting and uh, they're ready to go get started on that. And then east of that, we've got the Beersford extension from MLK Kepler over to State Road 44. That project is in design. It does also have construction funding available for it uh, based on the amount of money that development has paid for their projects. And then, uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we've done a, a study on Orange Camp Road to look at the improvements that are necessary from Woodland over to uh, Blue Lake. Uh, if you're familiar with the, the new Publix down in that area and the uh, section of Orange Camp east of 1792, you know that there's quite a bit of uh, confusion on the traffic pattern over in that area. With, uh, based on the study that we've finished, uh, we're gonna be taking uh, some recommendations to the council and uh, we expect that they will approve a particular uh, group of improvements and that, that will be programmed in this next priority list, uh, which will take up that funding that I mentioned earlier is uh, currently not yet allocated. So those are the things that we're working on. Next, we want to talk about what are we proposing to the council for their consideration on this next priority list. Before we do that, though, I think it's always good to point out certain things that we didn't recommend and why we didn't recommend them, even though some people may say, hey, that makes a heck of a lot of sense. Uh, over on the east side of the county, LPGA, uh, 
as I mentioned in that zone earlier, there's quite a bit of growth. LPGA is, uh, is uh, ground zero for a lot of that growth, and it would certainly make sense, you would think, to go ahead and expand that from two lanes to four. That said, we did not recommend that to the council because even though the road is still ours at this point, we are working on an agreement whereby it gets transferred to the Department of Transportation. They've been working on a study and, uh, and a design for that section that would improve its capacity as well as the interchange, which is their primary concern, um, getting that uh, widened out so that it would handle those particular cap capacity problems so it doesn't make sense for us to spend money uh, and then have them either change it or do something different. So uh, we're not recommending anything to LPGI. Uh, over in the Deltona area, uh, Saxon Boulevard, east of I-4, there's similar situation to what I've mentioned at Orange Camp. You've got a lot of different traffic patterns going on in that area, uh, but the Department of Transportation has been considering changes to their interchange, which would have an effect on anything we design or construct. So we're gonna wait to see what happens with that and see what effect that has on the traffic pattern. Uh, over on this side of the, or in this zone, uh, Kepler, uh, you may have seen on the uh, earlier map, if you noted that, uh, the section of Kepler north of uh, 44 up to Minnesota is in the uh, near critical section. Uh, that said, we want to wait to see what happens with the roundabout that's currently under construction at Kepler and 44 and see what, uh, what effect that has on that area uh, before we start moving forward with anything or recommend anything to the council. And then uh, up in the northeast again, we've got Timber Creek in extension. Uh, there's a section that uh, between Margaritaville and State Route 40 that's a gap. There's a developer that's uh, looking at developing that property. And again, it doesn't make sense for us to go out there and do something if we can get the developer to, uh, to design, construct uh, that particular project. So it's better that we spend our money on other things uh, overall. So what we are proposing in the Northeast, uh, Tomoka Farms Road intersection with Bellevue and International Speedway. Uh, that was changed a few years back, uh, and we're looking at making improvements to that. Some portions of it will actually be returned to its previous design, but. Uh, we're trying to make improvements to that section uh, so it flows better. It, uh, this is something that we are proposing that the council accept. The council's already voted on certain aspects of this. Uh, there's a project on uh, Tomoka Farms Road on the east side just south of I-4 that has paid a proportionate fair share uh, that the, or the county and the city of Daytona Beach have agreed will be used for this particular project. So we've been in design on this. Uh, that said, it's not technically a part of the road program until they voted in as part of this, so that's why it's on there. It's more administrative than anything. Uh, we also got a project to widen Timber Creek from Peruvian Way up to airport. Uh, the county had previously widened from State Road 40 north to Peruvian Way, and we actually have the design for this particular section that was done at that time. Uh, we didn't have the construction funds, uh, but uh, we think we've got the money to go ahead and fix that situation. There is a a large concern at the intersection with airport. You've got two elementary schools, one to the west of Timber Creek and one to the east of Timber Creek. And so you can imagine that uh, traffic just before school starts and after school ends is uh, complicated and uh, annoying at best. So uh, this will address that particular issue. Also, uh, Tomoka Farms Road, uh, we're looking at a study that would set an alignment to extend Tomoka Farms Road from its current terminating point there at uh, LPGA. It would carry it all the way north to State Road 40. This would just be a study to identify where it would go. Uh, what our expectation would be is that after the study, we would, uh, as projects, as developers come in to develop in that area, that they would be responsible for building those sections, but we need to know where the road should be. Uh, and so that's what we take a look at is studying that and identifying that corridor. Uh, on Williamson, uh, we previously had the widening down to Madeline. This would actually take it from Madeline down to Town West. Uh, this does include a crossing over I-95, uh, and therefore it makes it rather expensive. Uh, we're not sure that we're going to be able to program it for construction immediately, but it would be something that uh, we'd certainly be interested in getting done, and then that way Williamson is basically four lanes from one end to the other and gives us a good alternate route to i 95 in certain locations. Uh, in zone two, uh, we're making a recommendation to the council that uh, we go ahead and design the southern extension of uh, Williamson from State Road 44 north to Pioneer Trail. Uh, 
most of the property in this area is owned by the Utility Commission. Uh, there is uh, uh, no interest on them to go ahead and design and construct this road for us for some reason. But uh, what we do is, just like I said before, we would go ahead and design the road and put ourselves in a position to potentially get uh, a grant from a state or federal agency. Uh, so it, it uh, ultimately would work out as a great alignment, or as a great alternative, pardon me, to uh, I-95, and particularly when uh, the Department of Transportation finishes their interchange, it would provide another way to uh, move traffic in that area uh, overall. Uh, we'd also, uh, we're recommending to the council a longstanding problem uh, on State Road 44 is that on Saturdays, Sundays, and good beach days, uh, that uh, State Road 44 is just slammed with people going to the beach from Orlando, uh, and uh, anybody that lives in that area has a hard time going east-west since State Road 44 is the main artery through that section. So trying to alleviate that and give the, uh, the residents in that area an alternate route is what we're looking at. The county has widened uh, State Road 40, or pardon me, uh, 10th Street on that eastern side, east of this project, to four lanes throughout. And this would basically uh, not necessarily go to four lanes, but it would be a continuation of that to create that east-west thoroughfare as an alternate to State Road 44. Uh, in Zone 3, uh, we're making two recommendations. Uh, the first is to tackle the uh, capacity issue that occurs between Catalina and Holliver Road. Uh, that particular section sees a large amount of traffic uh, before and after work. You've got a large commuter crowd uh, that come up Catalina and then uh, turn down that small section of uh, Lake Helen Osteen and then uh, east on Holliver Road. Uh, what we'd look at doing is adding a potential lane in there specific to the turning movements so that anybody else that just wants to go north-south on Lake Helen Osteen Road isn't hampered by that group that uh, wants to make that turn. Uh, we'd also take a look at Howland Boulevard. Uh, we've just finished widening that entire stretch to four lanes, uh, so it's time to start looking at more, I guess. But uh, that western section in particular has been, uh, it's been a little bit strange when you take a look at what the traffic counts have been uh, over the last five years. Four years ago, it was above capacity, and then it dropped to near capacity, and now it's actually under capacity. We think that's more of a quirk than an actual... Uh, indication of what the traffic situation is. Anybody that's been on that section lately will tell you it seems pretty dang packed. Um, so we're going to take a look at that aspect. We're also going to take a look at it not just from a, a capacity issue but also for a safety issue. Uh, we've got two intersections over there in particular on uh, adjacent uh, uh, local roads, uh, Loblolly and Red Apple, uh, where you have sight distance issues where if you're uh, looking to the West, you have a hard time seeing over a, a small rise that's there. If you're in a small car, uh, you definitely have a hard time seeing oncoming traffic. So we'll take a look at uh, so, uh, solutions to those particular problems as well. And then in the last zone, zone four, uh, as I mentioned before, we studied Orange Camp. We expect to take uh, our recommendation to the council for that study on what to do in the, here in the near future. And this would be uh, our recommendation to move into the design and construction or fund the design and construction uh, of that, uh, that selected alignment or uh, path. Uh, we also recommend taking a look at uh, Kepler Road. That section north of State Road 44 is a problem uh, in terms of uh, you've got a large number of residential homes with driveways on a uh, relatively high speed road. And those two things just don't mix well. So we're going to take a look at uh, studying that aspect to see what we can do about uh, limiting certain elements of that or putting in turn lanes, different, uh, different things will be considered uh, about trying to attack the issues that we've got on that section. So, so that's what we proposed and this is our recommendation in terms of the priority. Now again, as I mentioned with the other one, the numbers don't mean so much uh, because the money basically gets slotted when it becomes available, when it makes sense to do so. Um, we have, uh, again, just like in the other one, uh, each of the zones is color coded. Uh, so that you can make it a little bit easier. You can see that uh, in the first four projects, we've got one in each zone. So that was not necessarily by design. It just happened to work out that way. Uh, but this is really more based on a uh, quantitative approach, taking a look at where we get the biggest bang for our buck, uh, where do we have the bigger problems that we need to attack based on those costs and factored for those costs. So this is what the staff is recommending. Now, that said, you know, nobody in the staff drives everybody in the, every road in this county on a regular basis. We know that uh, there are other problems out here that we may not have identified. 
So part of what we're asking you to do is to identify your top five priorities. Can be a road on this, project, on this list, it may not be. Um, what I would say is all we can spend money on are county roads. So if you have a problem with I-95 and you put I-95 down, I can't do anything about that. So I'd recommend you save your vote and vote on one of the county projects uh, or on one of the county roads, identify what you want to see done overall. So give us your top five. And then in particular, from the zone you represent or you live in, if you tell us which one in particular is uh, the most important to you. Every zone has multiple projects uh, that we've listed, and I'm sure, again, that you've got uh, others that you'd like to see. Uh, but for your particular zone, what's the biggest issue you'd like to see addressed? Okay. And uh, I appreciate everybody's patience. Uh, if you have any questions, again, we've got staff around the room to, uh, to help answer those questions. All right. And we're good. So uh, just so everybody knows, in the back, we've got uh, back right. That's uh, Storm Casters Zach grabbing a purse trying to get the heck out of here. Uh, we've got traffic engineering staff and Jay. And uh, our project manager in the back there is Travis Terpstra. So if you've got a question about a particular project or something you'd like to see, please uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to talk to one of them. Thank you very much.